Hello friends and welcome to the channel. If this is your first time with us, my name's Elena and today, look, I know that this is late. I know that I said I would upload something on Halloween or before Halloween and that I did not in fact do that, but hear me out. I'm in school. I don't really have a great excuse for this besides that I spent so long building this monstrosity that by the time it came to like make the video and upload it, I just didn't want to do anything. I had so much just raw video footage from this build that I, like my little brain just couldn't handle looking at it all. So this is when you're getting it. I figured I might as well upload it now because my other option was admitting that I wasted my entire weekend, which as much as it's true that I did in fact waste my entire weekend like this, I don't want to admit it to myself. You know, that feels like a special kind of loss. So this speed build is just think of it as like a late, it's an All Saints Day celebration or something. It's still fall, all right? Pumpkins are still relevant. So here you have a house shaped like a pumpkin and it does have a jack-o'-lantern face on the front and the inside is all Halloween themed, but just don't worry about that. So um, <laughs> if you can't tell, it's absolutely enormous. There's a point which I think I kept in the recording um, later where you realize like, or where I realized, oh, oh no, I have to furnish this, which admittedly, I don't have to have to, like nobody's going to come to my house and attack me because I didn't, but um, I still, <laughs> there, there definitely came a moment where I realized that like, because of who I am, I was not going to be able to put this down until I furnished it all. And that was a huge mistake because this is absolutely monstrous. Like no landscaping, no nothing. This house was fully like, I, it's the biggest thing I've ever built for sure. Like, I have a legacy house that takes up almost this whole lot, but even that shit, it's like, there's a lot of gardening outside or whatever. This is just four stories of absolute horror. But it does kind of look like a pumpkin in the end, and it is fun and Halloween-themed in the middle. So next year, when it's relevant to do spooky Let's Plays again, your cute little family could live in this. You're like vampire, your Adam's family, whatever. Um, Jack Skellington, I don't know. It's cute. Doesn't matter if nobody's gonna ever use it. I made it, so I have to upload it because otherwise then I just built a giant pumpkin. Um, the raw video footage for this, I think, ended up being about 15 hours, so I am kind of desperate to uh, voice over this and edit it and upload it just so that I can free up my disk space. Like, I genuinely, <laughs> I have so much. It's like, it's like six movies that's on my computer right now. Um, and I would like to delete it all. This actual video, I think, is comprised of like nine hours or so. Like I sped it up that much. Um, but again, like I did, I, I spent my whole weekend on this. Didn't do any homework. And I told myself I would do homework this weekend, but here I am recording the voiceover for this. So like, who knows, you know? Um, I, because I have no spatial awareness, like you know how um, in the, the show The Good Place, Chidi says... I have what doctors call directional insanity. I have spatial insanity. Um, I just can't tell how far away things are or whatever. Like if you watch my red speed build, um, you'll know that I can't, like sometimes me and driving don't go too well together. And this is one of those reasons that I just can't tell. Like if you asked me to, to measure like a foot with my hands or something, I wouldn't be able to do it. Um, so because of that, I drew this fun little grid on the ground um, just to tell myself like where the middle of the lot was. Uh, and it did work in the end, but uh, it's embarrassing that I, it feels like I had to have the bumpers at bowling or something like that. But anyway, um, I, did, <laughs> I did in fact uh, furnish the entire inside. It took a million years and I cannot tell you how much it frustrates me to say that I, the cute part of the build, like the bottom floor, which is actually really cute, I didn't record myself furnishing. Like I did that thing where I opened up OBS and checked all my settings and was like, okay. And then I just went into Sims without pressing record. So I'll give you a little tour of it, like kind of in the middle when I realized I forgot to record it, but you don't see the, the cute part of the build getting built. You just get to see the pumpkin monstrosity exterior. Um, yeah, I... There's a lot of this that's like chopped in different weird places. Like you don't see me put the roof on or you don't see me put this roof on. But that's just because um, I wanted to make it like as short as I possibly could given the circumstances. And um, 
the, so there's a lot of things where it's like, I tried something out and it didn't work and all that jazz. Like there, I probably tooled around with, um, in build mode for like a couple of hours before this recording that you're seeing even started, because I wanted to make sure, like I was trying to figure out how I could make the pumpkin thing work. I considered doing that like hatsy thing where you, um, she'll, she'll always like, if she's building something really epic, like Hogwarts, she knocks she knocks like the bottom, like the basement floors out so that she has like maximum room to build. And if I was really ready to commit, um, I maybe would have done that, but I think, um, I had enough, (laughs) I spent long enough on this, uh, in the end that it's probably good that I didn't do that. Um, so it's not super, like there's definitely still those stair steps on the side that make it not super pumpkin-y, but the roof does end up being extremely pumpkin-y and I gave it a little jack-o'-lantern face and it's cute and the colors are all right. So fight me. Um, yeah, so this is me doing the face. It kind of ends up looking like a Dalek or something. Like it just reminds me of like a doctor who, like a robot that some set designer invented in the eighties type of face, but it has a face, so I don't, I don't know what else to say about that, but it does. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I think that's, we'll, we'll talk about the different rooms when we get to them, but um, I hope you guys all had a good Halloween. I spent mine sanely indoors with my roommates watching Beetlejuice. It was delightful. The movie Beetlejuice suffers from that fun 80s thing of like, it's kind of funny to have a character that's super rapey. Um, you know, like all a Revenge of the Nerds or Ghostbusters, where it's just like not to be a killjoy, but I am a killjoy. Like I, I'm an Eng- I was an English major, and I'm like a raging feminist type of person. So I'm gonna I ruin a lot of movies, but I had never seen Beetlejuice before, except for at Cedar Point <laughs> Amusement Park, where they have like during their Halloween thing they have a Beetlejuice show that you can go to. And I went to it when I was way too old to be scared by it. And I was still scared by it. So there's that. I think they did like a weird blend of Beetlejuice and like Rocky Horror. That, see, that's, that's one of my big Halloween goals that I have never achieved is seeing the Rocky Horror picture show, like at midnight. I feel like it's kind of like a, like a gay rite of passage in a way too. Um, and I appreciate that. And like, I just, I like seeing people in drag. I like going to do dumb stuff at midnight, you know, all, all of that. Um, but nevertheless, I have, there's a lot of classic Halloween stuff that I haven't done because I am a huge baby. So this is just the part of the build where instead of talking about what's actually going on, I'm just going to talk about myself because that's who I am as a person at this stage in my life. But I'm one of those people that... I will try to be cool by watching horror movies. Like if, so my, my guy friends, freshman year of college, right? Super nice dudes, like 10 out of 10 guys, but they really loved horror movies. And I wanted them to think I was cool because like, I'm a freshman in college. Like I want these guys to stay friends with me. And apparently I have to do that by like pretending I have a different personality. I don't know, but they still liked me after I admitted that I was terrified of horror movies. So there's that good news. Um, but so I would go over to the dorm room, like me and my other friend, um, would go sit, you know, like they had their bunked beds and then the TV like set up on one of their desks cause fuck homework. And, um, we would watch whatever horror movies they felt like. Cause I certainly didn't have any opinions on what horror movie that I would watch. So we watched uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I remember we watched the collector, um, which is like less classic, but it's about, uh, you know, like a serial killer that, that collects things. So, I mean, the concept itself isn't that creative, but they had a lot of those death trap murders, you know what I mean? Sort of like the saw type thing, which I didn't enjoy watching, but you got to give it to them for creativity. Um, yeah. So then I would have to leave their dorm room at about two in the morning. Cause that's when all of your hangouts get done, um, on weeknights in college because nobody has any self-control and you all are kind of lonely. Like college is fun, don't get me wrong, but like you're all a little lonely the whole time. Um, And I would have to walk to my dorm because we lived in different buildings on opposite sides of kind of the residential street of campus. I'd have to walk myself out in the dark to my dorm, 
like at midnight after watching a horror movie, which I think is kind of a commonly freaky outy experience for most people. Like I think most people wouldn't really enjoy doing that. But for me specifically, I am, okay, uh, let me paint a picture for you. When I am 12 or 13, I watched the movie I Am Legend with my parents. Uh, if you know the movie I Am Legend, you know that it's not a strictly horror movie. Like it's you know, it's kind of an action thriller and definitely there's some scary moments, but it's not supposed to be like psychologically traumatizing. But no, um, one of the principles of that movie is that you, like the zombies can only survive in the dark. Like if, like they won't go where it's brightly lit so you can be out and about during the day and it's fine. Um, but like dark buildings are off limits. So I, uh, for months afterwards, I had to turn the light on before going into any room. That was like, if the room was not already lit, I had to reach in through the door and just flip the light switch on before I would walk in. It was, again, I'm like in middle school. I'm not a child. I was just a 13 year old who couldn't talk herself out of being terrified by that. Um, I watched Paranormal Activity at a sleepover in the seventh grade and I fully thought I was going to die. Um, and I, sat up. I was like sleep deprived for a couple of months after that because every single night, right as I was about to fall asleep, I would sit up and just go like, what if there are footprints by my bed? What if there's a black thing hanging like in the air and under like kind of where my feet are? Cause that's the thing that happens in the movie. Like I will take the, the horror moments from the movie and think unwillingly, like, I don't want to do this, but I just think to myself, how could this possibly apply to my life? And then I come up with a way for it to apply because I'm a creative person and uh, it doesn't end well. <laughs> so the Saw movies, I, I had this thing, I had this phase in high school where I would read horror movie summaries just to, you know, like get a flavor of what happened because I was always really curious after the premise, you know, when they're like, seven people get sewed together. Or whatever. And I would be like, I want to know what happens, but I don't want to watch the movie because I don't want to traumatize myself. So I would just read the summaries online and that would scare me too. So I I read all the summaries for the Saw movies on Wikipedia one day. And then the next day I'm walking home from the bus. Like the, you know, we had dropped off probably like, I would say maybe like a block and a half or so from my house. Um, And so I was walking home, just happened to be by myself that day. Like my brother wasn't there. He was doing like play practice or whatever he, he did in high school. And I was walking just by the woods like woods that I see every single day of my life. I have grown up in them. I used to play like princesses in these woods, like everything is fine. And I just thought to myself, there's a scene in the woods in the saw in the first saw movie. And then I sprinted the entire way home and I wouldn't go in the woods behind my house for about a month after reading the summary online. So no horror movies and I do not mix very well. So there's a lot of classic Halloween shit I haven't done. Um, including the movie Halloween, never saw it, never really want to. I'm good. Like, sorry, baby Drew Barrymore, but just, no, isn't she in Scream? Whatever. I just, I, I can watch a horror movie and while I'm watching it, I'm like all tough. I'm like, I know this is fine. This isn't scary at all. Like, let's make fun of the concept behind this. But once I actually, um, have to live with the knowledge I have, you know how afterwards you just have all these ideas about like, here's how something demonic could happen to me. Then that's when I fall apart. So the ultimate for me was definitely the trailer for the movie, The Uninvited, or no, The Unborn, which I watched the trailer at a sleepover when we were deciding what we wanted to watch. And the concept of the movie is that this girl um, had a twin who she absorbed in the womb She had like a twin brother, but she was the stronger twin. So she like ate him. Um, And then on her like 30th birthday or something like that, she starts getting these visions of this creepy little boy following her around. And she finds out from her mom that she had the secret twin. And I'm literally giving myself chills right now because I'm so creeped out. Okay, look at the roof. All right, you can criticize me for a lot of things, but you cannot tell me that that is the most, like this is the most pumpkin-y possible roof. This is really what makes this build. If you're like zoomed out, if you're on the managed world map um, and whatever, it started out in Brendleton Bay, but it ended up in the, I can't remember what it's called, but the get together world. If you're like in the managed worlds, you see this and it's just a whole ass pumpkin. Like 
there's everything about it just visually clocks as a pumpkin and it made me so happy. Um, so that was my success story from this, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I watched the trailer for the unborn, which has, um, if I remember correctly, there is a scene where this girl's best friend is running up the stairwell in a parking garage, which parking garages are already creepy just because they're like such liminal, like transient spaces. Nobody's in a parking garage all the time. Like there's nobody who's like supposed to be there really. Um, and like, it's not supposed to be a place that you would want to spend time in. So they like, don't make it, you know, they don't try to make it nice. It's not like a place that your human brain clocks is like, oh, this is kind of a decent place to spend some time in. No, like, so the friend is running up a staircase, um, in a parking garage and following her is like props to the makers of this movie, but also I could not stop thinking about it for months is a sort of teenage boy, maybe like a 13 year old boy shaped figure wearing one of those zip up hoodies where the zip goes all the right, all the way around the hood. And just the whole hood is zipped up to the top. Just the whole. (sighs) And now that I said that I'm going to be thinking about it as I, a 22 year old go to sleep in my bed tonight. Um, if you weren't, yeah, I'm a baby. Like if you couldn't tell by the fact that I spend all my time playing the Sims, I'm a huge baby. There's also um, one of those moments, I, I have like a special fondness actually for the horror trope of like somebody looking in the mirror and there's something behind them that they like didn't expect to be there, you know? Um, and so there's a, there's a scene like that where she's wearing, I specifically remember she's wearing white panties and a white camisole, like the spaghetti strap tank tops that were so popular in the mid 2000s. Um, and it, like these, these are her, theoretically her pajamas or whatever. Cause like nobody who's ever written a horror movie knows a woman in real life, I guess. Um, and she's babysitting for somebody and like, she's brushing her teeth or whatever. And she flips up her hair and she looks in the mirror and there's like the creepy little boy behind her. And I'm pretty sure this was like the poster. So I refused for, I think actually to this day, I have still not worn a white tank top, white panties combination like ever. I just, if I, if I started to accidentally do that, I'd have to wear like a different color tank top. Horrifying. So yeah, that's me in horror movies, but Beetlejuice was fine. Despite the fact that it's like, yeah, it's that eighties, like American pie sort of like, you know, this guy isn't a threat to women because he's super rapey. He's just like, it was like a way of making somebody kind of a standard creep as opposed to like something actually heinous, you know what I mean? But there is baby Winona Ryder in that movie, um, which is always great. She was like, I looked it up. She was like 16 when she filmed that movie and she still looks like exactly the same. Just her face has been that way since she was that young. Um, and I love her. I'm kind of glad that I missed, there's a lot of things I'm glad I missed about like the 2000s, late nineties. Um, and one of them is the like female celebrity breakdowns being super embarrassing. Here's, if you were screaming at the fact that I had made this not symmetrical, here's the part where I fix it. So you're welcome. Um, But there's that era where it's like Britney Spears had her public breakdown, where she shaved her head. Um, Winona Ryder like stole things and whatever, where it was like, I feel like now we have like the, the worst celebrity thing that happens is that they like, you know, they get, there turns out that they're like a sexual predator and that's horrifying too. Don't get me wrong, but at least it's like something that's actually super bad about a person. Um, like I would much rather know that Johnny Depp is a horrible person than like not know about it. You know what I mean? So I I feel like there was a time when the thing that entertained everybody was female celebrities having like kind of reasonable breakdowns, you know, like being a, being a kleptomaniac, right? Like shoplifting. It's not, a good behavior by any chance. Like it's, it's a bad thing. Like it's a, it's a bad sign for your mental health. It's a bad sign for like your general, like the way you were socialized, all that stuff. It's not good. Like nobody should, we don't encourage shoplifting in this house, but we do encourage recognizing that the intense pressures of being a celebrity, especially like a female celebrity from that young of an age, would make somebody act out like that, you know? So if Winona Ryder stole some stuff from a store when she was like 23, I don't really care. Like it's not good, but Louis Vuitton isn't going to go out of business 
And like, God knows that money isn't going to the workers who made whatever the clothing was. So fuck it. Um, or the Britney Spears thing, the breakdown that she had where she like shaved her head, totally reasonable looking back. Like, of course you'd shave your head if everybody made you style it for three hours before you left the house. Okay. Here's the part where I, um, (laughs) forgot to record myself, myself making all of this like cute. You see how cute this is on the inside? Actually, like I'm so mad, but, um, there is an indoor pool. Um, okay. So I cut this part out actually by accident, but there is a moment where I was looking at the, the floor plan of this pumpkin house and I just got out the fence tool and I wrote, well, fuck on the floor because I was so overwhelmed by the task of furnishing the whole thing. Um, sadly, that footage is no more. I don't know where it went. But, uh, so yeah, I have like, I tried to keep the bottom floor very like orange and pumpkin and like it would look, it kind of is that like light color that you actually would see on the inside of a pumpkin, um, which I liked, you know, I wanted to keep it sort of, imagine if you actually did live in one. Um, the top floors get a little bit away from that. And by a little, I mean a lot, but I still, I like that I kept the bottom floor, like very pumpkin-y. So there's like the formal living room um, on the one side, like with the Christmas tree in it. And I imagine that would be like where you'd have company over, like where your parents would throw parties, that kind of thing. And then on the right side of the front of the house, there's the informal living room. Um, There's that bathroom. There's two bathrooms on the bottom floor. And then the kitchen, which I think is actually really cute. And I'm so mad that it's cute because the shape of it means that I'll never be able to use it anywhere else. Um... It's got a sauna room, like that very dark room um, is the sauna. Uh, It's got a pool shaped like a pumpkin because like, why not? Um, And then there's the indoor dining room and the outdoor dining room. I wanted to, I figured like if this space had so much, (sighs) if this house had so much space, I was going to like use it all, you know? So any skill that you could ever possibly want to build, you can build inside this house. It has everything. So, um... Yeah, there's there's two hot tubs. There's like a hot tub inside the parents' room for some reason. Um, but I did get bored of the whole like orange decorating thing because I did just do an all orange speed build. So I didn't want to like just repeat that and use all the same things because I, I find that uninteresting. So when we get upstairs, like there start to be um, a the decorations aren't nearly as cute because I was just done with myself at that point. But the nature of the way that I am means that I could not be finished until the entire house was furnished. Like I had to, there had to be something in all of the rooms. There had to be a purpose for every room. And there is. Um, but yeah, indoor pool, because you know, maybe your, your Sims are vampires. I don't know. I would assume that whoever's living in this house isn't like super standard. Um, and then there's like stuff for a cat, I guess. I was thinking of a cat, but it doesn't really matter. Um, but it's just kind of like a very, if you have like a rich ass family, this is, but they're spooky somehow. Like this is an appropriate living space for them. Um, this floor is the kids' rooms. So um, each of the giant rooms that you can kind of see to either side, one is a balcony full of just like kind of kids' toys and things. And the other is like an activity room full of like different like drawing tables and all that jazz just to do um yeah, so that your kids could build whatever skill you could possibly want them to build. Um, so this is, I have, like, it's divided up into four bedrooms on this floor. And this one is the nursery, obviously. And then I have a toddler bedroom um, and a kid's bedroom, like two different kid's bedrooms. Because, like, just based on the length of the life stages, that seemed like the most reasonable thing. Um, so in the baby's room, because, you know, it's a big-ass room, but normally for a Sims baby, you just need, or not normally, like, you literally just need the bassinet. But I couldn't leave it at that because hyper-focus, you know, I'm just a functional adult. So I made it very, like, vampire-y and red and black and, like, all this. If you have a vampire baby, perfect place to put them. Um, so each of, yeah, each of these has kind of a color scheme. The baby's room is, like, red and black and vampire-y. The, um, it has, like, this little sort of... I wanted to imagine that it was, like, a place where maybe you would actually have a baby. So... Um, there's like that little sort of sink area, which I imagined would be like the changing table kind of area. There's the organ in there in case you want to play your baby to sleep, but they're like a a creepy baby. So they have to have a creepy lullaby. I don't know this, you know, like the, the different chairs or places where you could like nurse and stuff like that. Um, there's a toy box, despite the fact that the baby won't use toys. 
Um, and then the toddler room is, I, I go through a lot of different color palettes for that one just because I didn't know what I was doing. Um, but the little kids, like the toddler room is sort of candy corn, like yellow and orange type of deal. Um, and then of the kids rooms, one is like skeleton themed. Um, and it has like the skeleton from the jungle adventure pack in it. So they could like summon a spirit, I guess, if they wanted to. Yeah, this is a toddler room. The room to the right of it is a kid's room. And then the fourth room on the other side is also a kid's room. So yeah, there's one skeleton kid's room. I I did this. Like I almost gave them a whole ass playground inside because I just had so much space. I didn't know what to do with it. Um, but yeah, the kids, like the toddler room has their own little like feeding area, which would, I guess, kind of be useful. Um, if you were like a rich ass parent and you didn't want your child to actually be hanging out where all of the, the grownups are. Um, that's kind of, I'm imagining that this would be like sort of your traditional, like Edwardian ass, you know, you don't want your kids to actually be around like in your home. Would you, um, you want them to stay upstairs away from the people. Uh, and then the fourth kid's room is, uh, like pumpkin themed. So, jack-o'-lantern stuff all of the pumpkin decorations that could possibly exist I hope I tried to find all of them but I don't know if I did because the sims doesn't label things super awesome not salty just just disappointed um so it starts out being kind of red and black because I didn't know what was happening but it ends up being like orangey yellowy um and then on the floor above this I'll just say right now the floor above this is uh two teen bedrooms one is like fire themed and the other one is like the purple and black vampire set. Um, and then both of those are attached to a different activity room. So the purple one's attached to like a little art room where you could do like, I think it has the, the floral arrangement table and the um, like, you know, an easel and shit like that, like the artsy hobbies room. Um, and then the fire room is attached to like a video gaming room. It has like the arcade game and the the gaming pad and like a, a game system with a big screen TV and stuff like that. Um, and then they also have a, a nightclub on one side and then a library on the other side, which I kind of just thought was a funny thing to have, um, in a family home, but like, it's legit just so big that why not? Um, I guess if you were like a practical person that sort of had ideas about how to play the Sims, you would maybe have just furnished the first two floors or something. Cause that would be a sensible idea. But I am not that. I'm a huge mess. So I just took up the whole house with unnecessary things like nightclubs. Um, and then on top of the teen floor is there's like the master bedroom. I wanted the master bedroom because there's just so much space in this house. I figured they might as well have like their own entire floor pretty much. So it's like their, the parents' bedroom, which is sort of like night sky themed, um, which I think is cute, uh, where they have like a hot tub and a closet and like a vanity table, everything you could want pretty much. Um, and obviously their own ginormous bathroom. And then they have, uh, like a home gym up there with a bunch of different exercise machines and, uh, a science lab, like the evil scientist lab. And then, um, uh, like it's, I thought of it as like the witchcraft room, but it basically is just like all of the hobbies that I haven't gotten to yet. Um, so that includes like I think there's gardening stuff up there. You could you could totally like live your whole family's life just in this house and it would be fine. Um, there's gardening stuff up there and like all of the creepy decorations. I think there's like another organ just for shits and gigs, I guess. Um, but yeah, because I, I was picturing, like I wanted it to, I wanted to be able to picture like the parents being maybe like an evil scientist and like a witch or something like that. I thought it was fun. Um, so yeah, the decorations get sparser and sparser as you go up because uh, it was getting, like the footage was getting longer and longer. And I still am not at the point where I can just like quickly throw some things up. You know what I mean? I always am like obsessive about it, um, which is unfortunate. But this is the skeleton room right now. Um, but basically at this point in the build, I was just trying to entertain myself. So um, yeah, you get the, there's the skeleton room. Um, there's that little porch I was talking about with all the kind of kids activity stuff. Um, it, the fact that the porch is there makes it look slightly less pumpkin-y from the front just because it's not like a solid wall, but you know, I needed the variety. Um, yeah, I'm changing the toddler room from like that geometric red and black to the yellow and orange. This is something I'm hoping I get better at like over time, um, and over the course of many more Sims builds, 
Um, I'm just hoping that I can get a little bit better handle on what's there, I guess, like what furniture is available that I can use so I don't have to like go through and try like 50 different things. Um, but yeah, I, I think that the end house, it's totally livable. Like you can have eight people in it easily, easily eight Sims. If you have one of those, ha- like not hacks, if you have one of the mods that lets you have more than eight Sims in a household, this might be the house for you. Um, it's <laughs> like, you could fit, you could actually fit like an extra bedroom in this hallway or like two extra bedrooms even. Um, but I just wasn't going to try and make it like fit that well. I was done. I was exhausted and I was thinking about how much homework I had to do, but like, I couldn't stop, um, doing this house. It's fine. Everything's going according to plan, you guys. Um, yeah, other fun Halloween things. I've been trying to think of some good Halloween-related stories, um, and I have one from my freshman year of high school. I was um, on a double date, all right, but me and the other girl both liked the same boy, so the, the second boy was just like, hanging out, doing nothing. <laughs> I felt really bad about it, but not really. Um, he's engaged now. He's fine. He does. He didn't need my, uh, my help freshman year of high school, but it was me and my best friend, um, who I had started, I decided that I liked this boy in my Sunday school. I had that kind of moment, you know, where you see a kid that you grew up with and suddenly like his braces are off and he has like a good haircut and his hair is so shiny and whatever. So I had a huge crush on this kid. Um, and I normally like avoided going to church at all costs because I just didn't like anybody there, I guess. I don't know. And I also just like wanted to read steric fan fiction in the bathroom. (sighs) I made some mistakes in my life. Um, but the, so I, I wanted to go to like church events suddenly, which my parents were obviously delighted about, but I couldn't go by myself because then like, what if I couldn't hang out with anybody? So I brought my friend Allison Um, who to this day is one of my very, very best friends, like bridesmaid in my wedding, whatever. But this, this time and this boy was like the one big fight we ever had. We didn't talk for a couple months because of this. And now looking back, he's like the most, if you're a youth, all right, if you're under the age of 18, rest assured that you're going to be embarrassed by whoever you have a crush on now. Like you will. And that's healthy because it means that you're growing. Um, yeah. So we like, I kind of knew that he liked her better than me. So I was just like, it was a losing battle, but I was still so determined. I was like, this is going to work. So we went on a double date, me and her and the boy I liked and the boy that nobody liked. Um, No offense, Danny. It's just that you didn't have the shiny floppy hair. So, Um, and we went to our local coffee shop, which I still, it's a great coffee shop and I love it, but um, it is the place where like awkward 14 year olds go on their first dates and we all like crammed into a booth and then we just sat there for a second and then we're like, we should probably get drinks. So we, you know, you walk up to the, to the line with your like duct tape wallet. I'm not kidding. I had a duct tape wallet with like $5 inside of it. I was ready to buy my one single beverage, um, with my, the incredible power of $4. And when we were getting all of our drinks, we realized that the guy handing them out was dressed like Waldo. And because we're horrific and awkward, we all went like, oh, that's so funny. We should take a picture with you. And the Waldo guy was like, okay. And then we kind of started to take the picture, but I like, I do this thing when I get insecure where I like purposely try to like remove myself a little bit from the situation just because you know, then it's like, I chose to do this. It's not because nobody liked me or whatever. Um, and so at the, at that age, I definitely still had that tendency. So there was like a mom behind us who was like, oh, I can take a picture of all four of you with him or whatever. And I was like, no, 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 it's okay. I'll take it. Cause I wanted to like sit there and feel like very betrayed, um, about it. I want to like feel bad for myself. So I take, I, I took the picture and it popped up on my Facebook, you know, like how they do that. Your memories from nine years ago. Um, and it was this horrific photo of, my friend and the two boys, all like at the age of 14, so kind of like skinny and lots of like bones just jutting out of everybody's arms and all that stuff, smiling as if they had just farted, standing next to a Waldo that clearly felt uncomfortable and just wanted to get back to his hellish Halloween shift. Um, and they're all just about 10 inches apart, all right? 10 inches apart, and the boys have their hands 
shoved into their front pockets and my friend Allison has her hand put in her back pockets. And it's the, like, I'll maybe put a picture up here, but it's genuinely like hysterical and looking back, like you just see everything. Nobody was willing to touch each other despite the fact that like we're all theoretically here like on a date. Nobody's like gonna touch each other. There's no like putting your arm around somebody else because they're a boy and you can't do that. And I just, I don't miss that age at all. Like, man, and, and it's the age where your, your mom has to drop you off at the date. Like my friend Allison's mom drove us to the date location. And I still, I just, but it wasn't the worst Halloween I've ever had, I guess. Um, and then, uh, oh, another year on Halloween, I met my, one of my other very close friends, Matt, um, who, okay, so there's those guys that other guys don't think of as like threatening to women because they're not, they're like nerdy, you know, they're not smooth or cool or whatever. Um, so other guys, like, I think guys get this idea of like, sexually threatening men as like the guys that can actually get girls. You know what I mean? Like the, the jock types, sort of that guy from 13 reasons why, you know what I'm talking about? Um, and I think that that's what guys think of as like men who can be dangerous to women when they think of it. But no, this guy's one of those ones where like he cannot, he could not talk to women at all. Like, you know, he was kind of like a funny self-effacing type of dude when he was sober. And then he'd have like one drink and he would turn into this just like absolutely desperate, embarrassing. Like, I really hated this guy, just to be clear. <laughs> like he might've grown up since then, but I really hated him. Um, just because I kind of knew like he was, he was a pushy drunk. And if he had the ability to get you alone in a room and just do whatever he wanted, like he would have, you know, that's kind of the vibe that you get off him. Ladies, you understand. Like, it doesn't matter whether he's um, like sort of a hot alpha male type or not. Like guys can still be really scary even when they're embarrassing themselves by being like desperate. So um, I ran into this guy at a party and I uh, was, he was with, this is the kind of guy that he was. His friends, like my friend Matt was assigned to be this other guy's babysitter. We'll call this guy TJ. Um, so my friend Matt was assigned to be TJ's babysitter and like that, you know, they knew that he couldn't be just like left to his own devices when he was drunk because he would do something disastrous. And so TJ decided that I was the one he was going to latch onto for that night. That's kind of what he did. He would just decide like, I'm going to fuck this girl. And it didn't matter whether or not she was about it. He just was going to do it. Um, he, so he decided that I was the one that day. I don't even... I mean, I was dressed as like a slutty skeleton or something stupid like that. I had like skeleton tights, or whatever. I love to dress up for Halloween. Um, but somehow he found it very arousing that I had an entire face full of grease paint. Um, and he like, st he started just following me around. And Matt, who I like re hadn't really met before. Um, I think I was vaguely aware of him, but uh, this was the first time. This was the night that solidified our friendship. Um, and Matt... Uh, was sort of shepherding around TJ and TJ was dressed as a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, including, uh, nunchucks, like little costume nunchucks, but they did kind of hurt when he hit you with them, which was what he did to me. Kind of, that was his like sexual move was just hitting me with these nunchucks to try and get me to go home with him. And, um, I, I just like, you know, I, this was the point where I just like stopped having a good time at this party. I just wanted to leave. Like I was done. Um, and so drunk TJ is following me around, hitting me with his nunchucks and Matt clearly feels terrible about it. And he's like, like, let's just go home TJ. Like, let's just go, you know, we can go like, I don't know, whatever they were going to do, like smoke a bowl and order pizza or whatever. And TJ goes like, no, no, I have to, Elena is going to come. And I was like, I'm not going to do that though. Um, but increasingly I was just so done with it. I like wanted, I was like, whatever will get this guy off my back. And then I want to go home because I'm just, you know, this is, this is it for me. Um, and so this poor Matt goes like, okay, here's the thing. I think that he will agree to leave because he was at the point of drunkenness where like the frat guys wanted him out. Everybody wanted him to leave. Like it was, it was going to be a problem soon if it wasn't already. Um, so Matt was like, I think he'll go home. Like if you, if you just walk with us, then I will 
just kind of like slam the door behind him and like, you know, hope I'll like distract him and you can just like, then, you know, you can, you can go home. Um, and I'll like, once I get him into his room, then I'll like walk you back. And so I agreed to this because I just wanted, I, A, I was enjoying hanging out with Matt. I thought Matt was cool. Um, and I was right about that. Uh, and then I just also wanted, I was just, yeah, like I was done. I was done with this all. So, um, we walked back to the dorm. Matt's like standing between me and TJ, like taking the nunchuck blows. Um, and finally, like we get to the, the boys freshman dorm and Matt just like looks at me and goes, run. And he like shoves TJ inside, closes the door, <laughs> like the swinging door that, um, is in the guy's like, you know, it's just like one of those big dorm building doors. So from the outside, you could like hold it closed. Um, and so he like shoves TJ inside, pulls the doors closed and he's just like leaning back, like holding them shut. Um, so that your boy TJ cannot get out. And he's drunk enough that he doesn't think of like using a different door or whatever. He's just like struggling with this one. Um, and so I had time to, to leave. And that was how me and Matt became friends. Happy Halloween, I guess. And then what other Halloweens have I had? There was this family um, down the street from us who, this is kind of a bummer actually, um, but they lived down the street from us and they had a couple of teenage sons. And so every year in order to keep their son and his friends busy on Halloween, they would have this huge like haunted house style. Like if you went trick or treating at their house, you better be ready. It was like you had to walk through their yard. Some years you had to walk through like the main floor of their house. It was all like spooky and the, the high schoolers were dressed up like, um, uh, you know, zombies or whatever. Like they were all dressed up super spooky. There were usually like people sitting in a car in the driveway and they would like rev the engine just as you passed it. It was amazing. Like that's the kind of Halloween that I respect but can't actually get into because it sounds like a lot of work. <clears throat> but yeah, so I... You can tell that it was a good party weekend here at the big state school. Um, actually, not party weekend, party Wednesday. Because of the sheer volume of freshman boys that you see walking around with super dark hickeys. I don't know why that's a thing. <clears throat> but it's just not, like truly nothing brings a freshman girl more joy than giving a dude a super dark hickey. I don't know like what they're getting out of it exactly, but... It's clearly fun because I just keep seeing it like all, all the rest of the week, Thursday and Friday, pretty much. I was just seeing freshman boys walking around like sporting. It's finally cold-ish here, like November. Thank God it's a little bit cold. Um, but it's so, you know, it's like 50 degrees and all these boys are walking around still wearing shorts, still like they got to be in shorts and a t-shirt and they're just absolutely rocking this hickey. No attempts to cover it up. No, nothing. Just like strutting around campus, feeling amazing about themselves. And you know what? Good for them. Um, I do remember helping my friend cover up. He had, you know, hooked up with some guy or whatever, and he was going to his internship the next day. And so he just texted me like, Elena, I have a problem. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God. Like, what do you need? What do you need? And he was like, do you have makeup? And I was like, do you, do you, do you think that I wouldn't? I don't, do you think I just look like this? So I came over with my makeup and I helped him cover up his truly enormous hickeys. And I will never forget the moment where I asked him, hey, how exactly did you get a hickey this huge? And he just like would not make eye contact, just was kind of staring off into space and goes, like he's, he's like saying this through, through clenched teeth. I like to be in pain. And that was kind of the moment that I realized that I was officially initiated into like people having sex instead of my social circle in high school, which was, I held hands with this boy and now I think I might be a whore. It's fine. Um, yeah, this is, the nightclub is kind of off to your left. This is the game room. Um, the fire room is right there in case you forgot that from 20 minutes ago. I don't know. I have about, there's about five minutes left in this recording. Um, and I am kind of all out of chatter for the day. I really should do some homework. I'm probably not going to do that. I'm probably going to try and record like the next episode of my, 
uh, Colt Let's Play just because my roommates are gone this weekend, which means that I know for sure I can just settle in with my microphone and they're not going to think I'm a freak. Um, I did, I did some work. Oh my God, the cats, the cats. See, this is the fun thing about being home by myself is that, uh, suddenly the cats are very bored because it's just me. And you know what I do? I sit on the couch. Um, so they fight each other a lot more even than usual. So I just have settled into the couch with my laptop, my microphone, my phone, the TV remotes, some snacks, and then the squirt bottle for the kitties. Oh, here's a fun story. I have officially like adopted a stray cat, not as an indoor cat. Cause like I said, the two that we already have fight all the time, but, um, he is the most amazing. I'll put a picture of him here. Um, his name is Goose. He's my son. I would die for him. I feed him every single time I see him, which is probably why he hangs around here. But the other day I was just hanging out on the porch because I read on the internet. Okay. Don't laugh at me. I read on the internet that if you like cats, the way that they socialize in the wild is that other cats watch them while they eat. You know what I mean? It's like a safety thing because like, you know, something threatening could just come up. And so having another cat watching you eat is like helpful. And so that's why your cat always watches you eat, which I think is really cute. <clears throat> Sorry, very scratchy for, you know, cause we're 45 minutes into a recording. Um, so I, I now feel bad leaving him outside with his food. Um, so I sit there and watch him eat it the whole time, which look, if I wasn't going to become a crazy cat lady already, I'm definitely going to become one now. And I'm, I've made my peace with that. That's fine. I'm not worried about it. Oh, this is a master bedroom. They have their own little balcony that I didn't put anything on because I'm lazy as fuck. But they do have kind of a fun, like, midnight-themed vampire-y whatever. <clears throat> They've got a hot... They'll, you'll see me put the hot tub in in just a minute. But, yeah. So this is for the Morticia and Gomez of the family. Um, but, yeah. So I am currently desperately resisting the urge to like for real adopt this cat because we can't have a third one in this tiny ass house and like who knows what's going to happen when I you know move away for the summer and all that stuff so that's a little bit sad but I do still love him would still die for him um and I am going to take him to go get fixed soon I'm going to take him to get fixed and get all his shots um and stuff like that so that he stops fathering neighborhood kittens because we if I haven't said it before, our neighborhood is just chock full of cats. So they're trying to do that like trap neuter release thing, which is good. Um, but yeah, everybody, it's like, because this town is a college town, you know, like students are always willing to feed the cats and stuff like that. So, um, it's kind of one of those places where I could put him up for adoption. Like I could give him to a shelter and stuff. Cause he's such a friendly cat and I might still do that. Cause like, I love him dearly and I want him to be happy. Um, but it's also kind of the, it's the kind of town where like nobody goes out to like a shelter for a cat. You literally can just like step foot out your back door and there's probably a cat there already that wants to be adopted. So it's, I don't know. I want him. I want to keep him so bad, but I also am irresponsible and broke and you know, I'm going to finish this program in a year and a half and then what? So, but he is my son and I texted my sister, you know how you text the people that you're hoping they'll enable you. I texted my sister who is, she's like a snow, like full snow white, just will adopt a, she'll adopt any animal that like looks at her for longer than two seconds and B animals just like flock to her. She once found a pet bunny in the woods. Like he was not a wild bunny. He was like a pet bunny. And she just, he like walked up to her in the middle of the forest while she was out on a walk with her boyfriend, which I learned later, um, that they weren't going on walks, but they were in the woods. You know what I'm talking about? Um, but yeah, so she just like attracts animals wherever she goes. And so I texted her and I was like, look at this cat. Tell me I'm too broke and irresponsible to adopt him. And then I sent her a picture. He crawled into my lap. I was like crying on the inside because he was just like splayed across my lap, like so comfy. Oh, I love him. And she just texted back. He chews you. That your cat now. And I was like, that's exactly what I wanted you to say, but it's not helpful. Oh, this is the witchcraft room. This is the point where I really just fully gave up on decorating. But, uh, you know, it's got, all the, it's got all your witchcrafty needs in there. You can uh, learn to play the organ. You can stare at the scarecrow. Whatever the fuck you want, you know? 
be a slut, do whatever you want. Um, and this is the home gym. So really like the top couple floors aren't super gracefully decorated, but they do, everything has a purpose. Um, there you go. There's all the floors. Here's some terrible screenshots. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. I hope you appreciate you and I will see you all next time.